Hey guys, what's going on? Carl here, back with another video, and this one I'm gonna try to make different. I think I say that every single video, but I know a lot of you were asking if I can bring back the vlogs. Tech is the bread and butter. I'm trying to combine the two. That's where I see the channel kind of going. We're gonna try to experiment today. In three minutes, I'm catching an Uber to an airport. I'm heading to New York City, and I'm gonna use this guy. The RX100 Mark V. The form factor on this is what's so attractive compared to, say, my Sony A7R 3 Big difference in size. Let's switch to this guy right now on the Mark V, and we're gonna pack all of this gear now. Oh boy. Ooh, we're set. <laughs> Literally got through the airport gates in five minutes. That never, ever happens. Even managed to get some food too. So the biggest thing that I'll notice, this guy, huge. Just as a little example, this is the 12 to 24. This is a 24 to 70. But I think this is actually bigger than the RX100 altogether. Just shows you what a powerful little camera this is. And of course you don't need that huge hunkin' thing like this guy. It doesn't feel as imposing, it doesn't feel like you're in someone's face, you're not some weird paparazzi person. It's just a normal vlogging camera, and you can get by, even in an airport. Super awesome driver. What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is Tenjin Sherpa from Nepal. From Nepal! Thanks for picking me up, by the way. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Back to this camera. The biggest thing, as I said, it just fit into my pocket whenever I was flying. It was easy, it was manageable. Sometimes my larger camera, it feels like its own piece of carry-on. I don't know how other vloggers do it. Peter McKinnon. 1DX Mark II, guys with Canon cameras. Those things are huge. This guy, into my pocket, hidden away, and now I'm out vlogging again. Dope. NYC. <laughs> Got into the room, survived. Spec-wise about this camera, it does look similar to the Mark IV. It's got the same 20.1 megapixel CMOS sensor. And the big thing that you're buying this guy for is the performance. It looks so much better than a smartphone. And I know that smartphone cameras have gotten better over the past couple years, just not comparable to a dedicated camera right here. Loving, of course, the flip-up display. That's something that I wish the higher-end Sony's had. It's helped to frame myself and perfect for vloggers, content creators that kind of want to see what's going on. Just make sure you look at the lens, not at yourself. I think the photo and video quality is unrivaled in a compact point and shoot. Obviously, it is expensive. We get it. It's around a thousand bucks, but you're getting what you pay for here. The best, hands down, the best point and shoot camera of 2018. Maybe until the Mark VI comes out this year? One thing that I've noticed for sure is the autofocus has improved from last year. It's got 315 autofocus points across 65% of the sensor. It's great, especially for moving one-man production crews like myself. Gotta rely on that AF. There's that saying, the best camera is the one that you use or the best camera is the one that you have on you. It's gonna be this guy, cause you can fit it into your pocket. It's essentially a full-fledged mirrorless camera crunched into this little form factor. All right, I think I've said my little bit. Let's go explore New York City a tad bit. We've got one super sweet location that we gotta go to. So we've made it to B and H, the mecca of camera stores. If you've ever looked at a camera, anything related, you've heard of this store.
Yeah, yeah. Ready? For sure. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Ended up just grabbing a few little goodies, mostly batteries for my A7R3 and a couple extra batteries that you just can't get in Canada. Time to get out of the New York cold and head back to the hotel and we'll probably wrap up the review. I want one of those scooters. A real bad uh, wrapping up the review of the Mark V. Ended up grabbing a pair of Vans also. Gum bottoms, all whites for the spring slash summer. Okay, so final thoughts, RX100 Mark V. There's definitely compromises. If you could hear me outside when I was vlogging with this guy, maybe the audio wasn't as good as if I had a dedicated microphone, especially on windy days that's where you're gonna notice the audio sucking. Instead of this pop-up flash, which I've never used on not only this one, but all of my previous ones, I wish they had a hot shoe, cold shoe. I think on Mark II they had it and they took it away for some reason. I honestly don't think flashes are useful at all. Bring back the hot shoe, cold shoe. Battery life is also something that I wish was better, but of course, look at the size of this guy. It's tiny. That's what she said. <laughs> but other than that, those are the few sacrifices I think in having a guy like this. It really comes down to, are you willing to sacrifice the form factor being able to, I'm gonna say this time and time again, fitting this guy into your pocket now that I have my jacket with me. I think only you can make that decision what I guess works for you. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog hybrid sort of a review. If you guys did, let me know down below in the comments and stay tuned for day two when I'll be testing this guy, the A7 III. I'll catch you guys in one of my next episodes, hopefully tomorrow, one of my next vlogs. Peace.